Well, good morning. Thanks for joining us here today. My name is Robert. Thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. And today I get to share with you the final word for the day from the book of Genesis. It's been a great time walking through Genesis the last few months, and this passage in Genesis might be my all-time favorite. And I'd be lying if I said I wasn't excited when I saw that I was assigned this passage. Now, as you recall, for a while now, we've been looking at the life of Joseph and his family for several weeks, actually, been following his storyline in the book of Genesis. And it all started with young Joseph receiving a vision from God of his future leadership, and him being a little bit of an arrogant teenager and sharing it boldly with his brothers, only to have them uh, fake his death and sell him as a slave to Egypt. Now, we've seen how God was at work in his life through these stages and how God redeemed all along the way. We've also seen the fulfillment of Joseph's dream. He was put in this place of incredible leadership, being second in command in Egypt, and his brothers did in fact come and bow down to them before they knew his identity. Now, when, brother, when Joseph's brothers learned who he was, they were afraid he, they would kill him. Obviously, they, they had done terrible acts to him, and they were f- afraid of their life. Now, it seems logical given what they've done, but Joseph didn't do this. However, as we get to chapter 50, we learn that their father had died, and they were again worried that Joseph would kill them. So they come up with this plan for how they can maybe schmooze Joseph and protect themselves. But then we find the best interaction, I think, in the whole story of Joseph. I'm going to read it from Genesis chapter 50, starting in verse 19, because it is just that good. Uh, Starting verse 18, rather, it says, His brothers came and fell before him and said, Behold, we are your servants. But Joseph said to them, Do not fear, for am I in the place of God? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. So do not fear, I will provide for you and your little ones. Thus he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. So amazing, so much at work there. Probably one of my favorite exchanges in all of the book of of Genesis there. And Joseph offers forgiveness to his brothers. He acknowledges what was wrong and offers true forgiveness. But did you catch that statement? He says, what you intended for evil, God meant for good that many people should be kept alive. See, you may not have had siblings sell you to a foreign country as a slave, but no doubt you've had some people commit evil acts against you in some capacity. But what we do with that is so important. Joseph chose not to hold these things against them, but instead he chose to look for how God used and redeemed their actions for his good. In the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 28, it tells us that in all things, God works together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And that verse is so commonly misapplied and thought to mean that if you love God, he will make sure only good things happen to you. But if you've lived for just a few days as a follower of Jesus, you realize that that application gets proved wrong because there's all sorts of bad things that happen to us in life. Instead, What that verse is telling us is exactly what Joseph communicated here. That God is, in his power, will use the evil and terrible things that happen to us to bring about good, either in your life or through you as a benefit to others. See, it could be today that your tragedy is the thing that is helping you become the person that God created you to be. It could be that your tragedy is what allows you to experience opportunities that change your life in an incredible way. It could be that your tragedy is what allows you to be in the place of doing what God has created you to do. It could be that your tragedy is what your future ministry will be based on. Now I get it. It's not an easy thing to digest if you're currently walking through tragedy. I doubt Joseph would have wanted to hear as he's riding to Egypt tied up on a slave cart that that this is something God's going to use to do something great in his life but he chose to trust God and live the way God called him to, with character and integrity and trust. Through his life and as a result, he got to see God redeem in an amazing way, and then he gave God credit for it. So today, you may have had some things happen in your past, and I encourage you to look back at how God has redeemed and worked through them. Where is your God moment? Where did God show up in the midst of that? And if you're presently going through some tragedies, some difficulties, some some low points in life, know that God redeems in a way we don't always understand in the moment, but that are beautiful and powerful and amazing as we get to understand them in the future. 
So I hope that encourages and inspires you today to trust God and to lean in to your relationship with him because God is always at work. Even when evil acts are committed against us, God wants to use them to bring about good in our life and the lives of those around us. Have a great day, Calvary. We'll see you next time.